love the speckled eggs. But look at this. This is from a calcium deficiency. See how soft that is? Um, I don't know why because there is oyster shells in there. Maybe I'll just add some more so that they can see there's a bunch in there, but... It's a very pretty egg. I wish it wasn't like that. Hey everybody, it's Liz at Northern Mill Farms. Um, we are located in Zone 8B, almost 9. Um, oh, I got major hat hair. It's been really cold. It's been uh, frosting for like two mornings now. Um, and I feel like I haven't done a walk through the garden in forever. And it's probably going to be really quick because we don't have a lot of stuff growing right now. But we are growing some things and we have a bunch of trays of stuff that are sprouting up. And we're going to be planting those things in a couple weeks. So we're about ready to get up and going. Um, we had a seed video of things we were planning on starting last week. I started almost all my trays. I do need to get some time to start the last couple trays. I think I have five or six trays left. And then we're going to have to wait a couple weeks because I'm out of seed cell trays. Um, but then we'll start more in a couple weeks when those are ready. So, we also have a project of my trellis rotted from the vines being on top there. Um, so, we have to chop down all of the vines. We're going to cut the plant back to the bottom. Probably leave, you know, a foot of plant. Um, and then it'll send up new growth, hopefully in the spring. And we'll just clear off the top. And we'll either put some regular pressure treated boards and little strips of chicken wire or something like that. Um, but it's been up there a good six years, I'd say. So it did okay. And then we're in the middle of cleaning up the uh, perennial garden sides here. I have to cut back all the cannas. I'm going to dig up the lilacs and my azaleas. Get ready to bring them to Tennessee. Um... We're going to also bring Japanese maples, but a lot of the stuff here on the side in the perennial garden is very well established and too big to take. I'm going to take my dogwood plants. This is a really pretty, like, I don't know if you can see this red. And then there's this yellow. But these are dogwood bushes. So in the spring, they look like just regular bushes. And then in the fall, their um, stems turn really pretty colors. So... Um, and the lilac and the Japanese maple. But we're going to have to dig those up here while they're still dormant. Um, it's easier on the plant um, when we go chopping into its roots. I see something in the other garden too. Oh, and this is Valerie. She's our newest addition to the family. She's nine months old and she's our bonus baby. Um, so there's all kinds of stuff starting to sprout up in here. Um, our plants, our flowers that we planted a couple months ago are starting to look really good. Um, but all the daffodils from last year are coming up. We have some other things coming up over there on the edge. Um, some things didn't make it. It looks as though they're not going to make it. Um, but a lot of daffodil sprouts are poking up. And... Yay! Happy almost spring! Look how cute those are! Gonna have to take a picture and use that for the cover. Okay, so I have to get out in here too and finish cleaning this up. I started cleaning up this um, herb apothecary flower garden. Um, I cleaned up the middle here. I threw some seeds, some larkspur. We planted some sweet peas that probably won't grow. We do it every year and they don't get but maybe like knee high, maybe a little bit taller and then they it gets too hot too quick and they die. But I'm really hoping that they'll come up soon before it does get too hot. But we planted some. Uh, I gotta plant my fennel. I have chamomile. A couple other herbs we gotta get to planting. Um, we have, um, the deer have not come back yet for our elderberries, so I'm really hoping they don't. But there's some shoots in the garden here, in the market garden. We have 
the garlic is doing awesome. It looks really well. And then we have this shoot of the elderberry. So I think I'm going to try and dig that up. And we have a spot for either two or three more elderberry plants down here at the end. So I'm going to put them there. Um, I've been watching these and loving these. And they've just been so awesome the whole time. These kaolettes. And let me find one so because I always show you. Now, this is grows like a Brussels sprout, right? I've been picking leaves off of it to feed to the bunnies. Um, but the leaves will grow all the way. I've been pulling them off and feeding the leaves to the bunnies. But each little nub on the side, like a Brussels sprout, will create a little head of kale. Isn't that adorable? And then eventually, when they're all, all the way up, flourish to be little heads of kale like this, I can chop it and sell it as a stock like Brussels sprouts, but they're called killets. Isn't that adorable? Um, we have some purple, purple broccoli or cauliflower that we're going to have to harvest. It's not getting too big, but neither did any of the other stuff because it is so warm most of the time. Uh, like even right now, I'm pretty sure it's probably close to 70 degrees. It's starting to get hot. Um, but and then again, it's supposed to freeze again tonight, so. But I planted peas along all these tomato um, fences here. There's a bunch of peas along these three fences and the bitter melon fence. There's some up there. Uh, we have some collards going over there that um, I have more in the greenhouse to plant. We had high winds that took up some of the uh, black fabric. I'll show you better in the lettuce. We just ended up taking it off in the lettuce. Um, I threw a bunch of tatso sprouts out here. So we have tatso in one. We have bok choy in another. Um, I'm pretty sure this is the... What are those called? Look like beets. Swiss, uh, Swiss chard, the rainbow Swiss chard. Um, bok choy... And some other kind of greens. I probably won't be able to tell. Probably either some kind of pak choy, purple lady bok choy. Uh, we have a little bit of the carrots left that I'm going to have to harvest soon. I have the flowers are coming in good right here. Um, it actually looks like a couple of nasturtiums might make it, which is really rare. They usually don't make it for me. Um, but we have to transplant the Swiss chard into the fabric. We have some cabbage I'm going to put on the edge here of this fabric. Um, we have a couple more flower patches. And then in here I planted, there was the same fabric that's everywhere else. And I planted in, there's about 900 beets. Now I personally am not seeing any sprouts here. Um... But like I said, I planted like 900 beets, and that's just awful weird to not see one sprout off of that many. So I'm just thinking that either I'm impatient and not seeing them and overlooking them, which could be it, because there's a lot of little green bits. They just, none of them look like beet sprouts to me. Um, our moringa trees are looking pretty rough, but we have some more going in the greenhouse. Um, again, here I splattered some lettuce uh, and some Asian greens. Same with in the box. There's a bunch of uh, lettuce and kales. Three or four different kinds of kales. And Asian greens back here. We did pea shoots on both sides of this, um, what used to be our berry patch. Um, but down here we have three or four rows of pea shoots. The inside row next to the fence, we'll climb up and we'll um, pick them for sugar snap peas. Uh, and then the outside three rows will be used for shoots. So you can eat those pea shoots. Uh, we like to take them when they're about two, two and a half feet long. And then you can cut them up and you can put them like in stir fry or with chicken or something like that. It's really good that way. There's a sad point here. I don't know what's up with this guy. That is weird that it's right next to this one which looks just fine. That's really weird to me. Maybe something happened. Maybe a cat was playing and goofing and snapped it. Or, I don't know. It's weird. But these flowers are looking great. 
Um, here's some radishes down here. I sprinkled a bunch in there. And then we had this landscape fabric all the way around in a big horseshoe shape with one walkway all the way to the back. And the wind came and it ripped it all up. But there's so evenly spaced planted even over here. There's kale. I think there's two or three different kinds of kale. And then back here there's more tatso. And then we have a couple different kinds of lettuce right now. Uh, one, two, two, I think, three, three different kinds of lettuce. But there's a bunch in the um, seed cell trays, of course, because, you know, I need every kind of lettuce. I don't know why, but I feel I do. <laughs> it's going to be a heck of a time. I'm going to have my neighbor come over and she's going to help me transplant and probably thin because thinning is one of the hardest things for me to do. So she's going to have to help me thin that mess on the other side over there. Um, we have cardboard laying down. I need to get some cardboard on that one. They were walkways last year. This year we're going to, I'm going to get some rabbit bedding from out back. Um, I may just lightly till the top after the cardboard's been down for a while. Um, and we're going to potatoes this year. We I ordered some potatoes from Gurney's. Um, and I've never grown potatoes before, so it's going to be fun. I have actually a bag of potatoes that have a bunch of eyes that are really big in the back. So when I get my other potatoes, I will plant those too. I have a big, long roost out uh, with the old hay that I have been cleaning out of the bunnies' pens for a couple months now. Piled up out back. And then I'm going to have to bring some out here. And we're going to have a couple shorter beds up here. Of different kinds of potatoes I'll have to show you those when I get them uh, but we have a couple orders coming in that I'm gonna share with you I'll share our baby chicks when we get those you'll know um, I'll post a video of us going to get them the day before and then I'll share the video of the babies when we have them um, explain to them uh, explain to you about them about what kind of breed they are you know what their purpose is uh, you know their temperament things like that and then um, so we have those fun videos of the baby chicks coming and the seeds and plants and all that stuff coming in and everyone's getting excited because it's spring you know so everyone will be excited about uh, what we're looking forward to planting and those videos and our newest animal to the homestead and I am most excited about that one I have to put up a fence coming up. I had someone stop by an older gentleman who said he's a, a retired vet and um, He had kidney surgery. It was a whole long story um, But he wants to he used to work or own a farm and he wants to get back to it So he wanted to know if he could come out and help he said he could definitely put up fencing and I said oh well so I'm saving that part of the meat bird area and our new animal area and I'm gonna see if he'll do the fencing I think maybe I'll have my husband put in the fence post for him because he does seem a little bit older so I don't really I don't know I'm sure he would love the work but I don't really feel comfortable having him he just had kidney surgery too he said so he also wants to get back out there but I don't really feel comfortable having him slamming fence posts in so but we have the dill we have the fennel we have some catnip catnip stays far out of the garden I don't put it in the garden um we have some celery we have pansies we're gonna plant in the flower apothecary st. John's um this white dill uh, it's actually a flower. It's not an herb. Actually, the sap can irritate some people's skin. And uh, so you definitely don't want to just go into trying to eat that. Um, let's see, what else are we planting here? Leeks. Again, we're trying leeks. Nobody said anything. Hopefully, maybe that was a video that the comments were turned off on. Um, but any suggestions or any thing about leeks would be greatly appreciated we have purple broccoli the early sprouting broccoli lemon balm feverfew calendula yarrow pink sage dill green brussels sprouts 
cauliflower, orange cauliflower, purple cauliflower. So we have a few more cold weather stuff over there. Hopefully it'll get sprouted, get going, and won't get too warm too fast. Um, we have this tray that just has a picture of a flower on it. So I've already forgotten what I planted there, but obviously know that it's a flower. Uh, mixed marigolds, pin cushions, status, purple stalks, snapdragons, some more white dill, straw flower. So that's all stuff. Yellow status. That's all dahlias. Oh my god, the, almost a whole tray of dahlias is um, coming up. They really do like it cooler. So now is the time to plant if you're in zone 7. Um, I would definitely greenhouse some dahlias if you're doing them by seed. Um, and soon is the time to plant. Actually, in the next month or two, zone 7 or higher than I, or lower down is the time to plant for uh, tubers too as well. Because they're a summer, summer plant. So um, We have cilantro and pak choy. Some more lettuce. Uh, moringa's in there, which probably won't go now because it's too cold. Purple heart cabbage. Purple status. Uh, looks like these things need a little bit of water. We got some cumin. Some mimosa trees. Uh, I have some foxtail fern. Little berry things that I assumed were the seeds that I collected. And I'm trying to make some foxtail fern. Everything in here looks good. All the peppers are doing good. Some of these little sticks are starting to get their leaves back, so they're starting to warm up a bit. Um, collards need to go in soon. I'm going to dump this tray. I think I'm going to pick out a few things. Like, I'm pretty sure this is the St. John's wort, and this may be hyssop. So I'll save the six or so plants that are actually in there. This is Cleome. It's a flower. I may just throw that into somewhere. And when I see one of our succulents, it blooms once a year. Every 10 months or so, it seems. Um, oh, actually, they're all doing it. I'm unsure what the name of the flower is, or the succulent, but it has these really pretty bell-shaped flowers that have, like, sunset colors. They're pink. And yellow and orange and it's on a long stalk I think it's like a mother of millions um, plant they start out like this all closed up sorry all closed up and then they move on to being like this and open up all their little bells We're going to have to go inside and see if Odin's awake yet. Hi, huh, Valerie. You want to go see if Odin's awake? So, I have... Oh, I have even less than I thought. I have two seed cell trays. And if I empty that one, I've got three. I could put that four. Yeah. So, I have a couple more I could do. Uh, I got to, I'm turning the water on today. It's been a couple days since we've had any water. I'm going to water the greenhouse in a little bit. Family went to go pick up uh, groceries from Walmart pickup. And I don't really think, I got to work tonight. It is... It's Saturday, so I have to work at 7 uh, till 10, and then, uh, so the kids will be here. I told them I might make them some gingerbread cookie stuff because I want to make some cutout cookies. So if I make that now, I can put it in the fridge and they can cut it out while I'm at work, or we can cut it out tomorrow in the morning. Sunday, hopefully, is our rest day. We have friends coming over, and we'll get to visit with them. We've already started separating our chickens, like we said we were going to do. Um, we have only two baby bunnies left, two does. I think I'm going to keep them for breeding um, for now. And then after they've bred and they have their babies, I'll keep one or two out of that. Here's our cochins. We're going to take Jungle Man and we're going to put him over in the new pen that we're building. 
uh, right now. We've cleared a spot on the other side. We've cleared a spot on this side. Um, I want to see maybe... I thought about taking the bunnies. I'm unsure if we should do this, but I thought about taking the bunnies and actually pulling them out of there and bringing them up over to here by the trailer. Um, that's, that's under the trees, so it'll be shaded and it may be cooler for them in the summer. Um, even though right there only gets morning sun, so it wouldn't be too bad, but it would put them out of the way. And I could add a pen onto this side because we plan on bringing this pen that the roosters are in. I want to bring it out to here and put one here and then put a second one probably about here-ish the at the edge of the back garden here. So I have two more pens. Um, we're going to separate where those roosters are. I'll end up putting some Americanas so we'll have blue eggers. I'm going to put my olive eggers right here and then we're going to get some well summers and midnight majesties. Now those are both brown egg layers and they're on the darker side. Well summers have darker eggs and are often speckled. So those are some of my favorite eggs. And then we have one well summer right now in there and she's the one who does lay the brown speckled eggs. And then the midnight majesties are the ones that lay their midnight majesty morans. We've had cuckoo morans and another Moran, and they didn't lay the dark eggs like everyone says, it's Morans. We found that these Midnight Majesty Morans do lay really darker eggs, though. So we're going to get a whole pen of the Morans and the Well Summers. Um, and then I hope to have a... I ordered, un, I ordered five, because I think that was the minimum you could order, um, unsexed midnight morans so hopefully i'm assuming that at least one out of the five will be a rooster which is kind of funny because usually you hope when that happens that you only have hens but i really hope that one of them is a rooster it'll be sad if they're not though because then we'll have these more expensive chicks that we'll have to eat when they get bigger so here's the bunnies these are the two that are left. We kept a big gray one and then the little black one was the one that was left because everybody wants the bigger bunnies when they hear Flemish Giant. That's what they want is the giant ones. We thought about getting Continental Giants too to add to um, just to make bigger bunnies because that's what we want. But if I move the bunnies over to under the tree, I can take this pen and I can attach another pen right here. So then we can have one pen here, one pen here, one pen there. We'll, so we can have four over here in this corner in an L shape. And then I'm put this stuff here. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. But that should be everybody, I think. Because then I'll have blue, olive, brown. I already have the leghorns over here. So those are white and productivity. Um, we have the Cochins for docile, great pet, uh, dual purpose, so meat and eggs. They have light brown eggs. Um, they're some of our favorites. They're so adorable and everyone loves them and they're the sweetest with kids. They're sweet with people. They're not really like a scared flighty bird. Uh, I thought about putting Duke in with his own couple of, uh, Bard Rocks. I figured we could put the Bard Rocks and the Cuckoo Morans in together because they're the same. Um, take out. And then leave the, the back pen then will be a mix. Our barnyard mix as usual. Um, then Chris is finishing up this last pen. I told him I'd like to be done this weekend. So we're finishing up this last pen that we need to have on here. We're going to take, like I said, the ball, uh, jungle man. And we're going to put him in here. Or in here. Either way, he's going to come over here. I want to see if I can make frizzle polish. So that the frizzles can have little polish ones that have frizzle. We'll be getting more ducks. We're going to...
and of course I even have prairies back here. I have lettuce, and I think they're all lettuce actually. Lettuce, lettuce, lettuce. Um, and one more thing, let's check the mushrooms. Say hey, Odin. I love you, Odin. You see Valerie? Show me with Odin, but here is the mycelium substrate for the pink oysters, and it is doing awesome. It is rocking out, it's got these big white strips. This bag is probably a third of the way. This one's less. This one's mm, a fifth or a sixth. This one's probably a third. Um, and there's no way to check on the buckets. I just try to keep the bowls of water in here to keep it humid. We have a good temperature for mushrooms. We have almost 70 degrees and 70% humidity, so it could be probably a little bit more humid in here. That just means that I will water these plants, um, which are all doing pretty well. And after I water them, it's usually a day or two that the uh, soil holds moisture and lets out the moisture into the room. So these buckets haven't started doing any pinning yet, is what it's called when stuff comes out of the side but it'll be the oyster mushrooms will be first so it'll be the pink oyster so it'll be the pink oyster and the white and then the pepinos will come next I plan on putting them out in the greenhouse because they are supposed to be at a little bit cooler of a temperature so those will go to the greenhouse mm, next week I think it's supposed to get close to freezing so when the cold snap comes I'm gonna put some shiitakes out there and the pepinos because shiitakes need a cold snap before they fruit so that'll be perfect for them even though they're gonna take twice as long as the others so but I gotta go and feed these babies and then probably put Valerie down for a nap but I just wanted to say I missed you guys and it was nice to have my comments back on so don't conform people, be transformed, and we'll see you on the next one.